as it says here, it's this third step that causes the deviation between substitution reactions and eliminations. Because if there aren't any good nucleophiles around to come up and interact with that positive charge and form a new bond, then here is what that carbocation will do instead. Um, it kind of reacts with itself. One of the carbon-hydrogen bonds is a source of electrons that becomes an extra bond. It becomes the double bond. And so if we take these two electrons and form that double bond, that releases a hydrogen with a positive charge, a proton, and that can be quickly captured by a water molecule floating by. This acid catalyst is going to have some water content, and that's where that H2O comes from. And so we regenerate this hydronium ion, which can go back up to step one and find a new alcohol to react with. And so this is really the key to what makes an elimination work. If we have something very reactive like a carbocation, again, in the absence of good nucleophiles, uh, this is what will happen. And sometimes it happens even if you do have nucleophiles around. Um, we have to put up with elimination reactions sometimes when they are not intended. But in this chapter, we assume that is the desired product. Again, like I said in the last little segment, just like we have SN1 and SN2, we have E1 and now E2. And the E2 mechanism, that 2 stands for the fact that the key is that two molecules are involved in the slow rate determining step. But the water here, instead of acting like a nucleophile and just forming a bond to a positively charged carbon, what we find that for an alcohol like ethanol, which is what we have here, uh, it would not form a stable carbocation, so it refuses to do so. So here we've got two things happening at the same time. We have the hydrogen being pulled away by this water molecule, and at the same time a water molecule is our leaving group on the other end. So this should look very similar to the SN2 mechanism. It's just that our result is a alkene instead of a substitution reaction. So in the way of a brief review here, we've seen carbocations before and now we've seen they can do two things. They can either engage in a substitution reaction where the final step is to have that positive charge capture something like a chloride ion and again that was the kind of products we saw in the last chapter. Now we've seen that what can also happen is that we can lose a hydrogen ion essentially to make that elimination reaction go and we create an alkene. It turns out there's one more important thing that can happen when it comes to carbocations and that's the third one here. Sometimes it can rearrange itself and then do some reacting. And the fact that carbocations can rearrange is a good piece of evidence that they exist in the first place. And the next slide shows us what that is all about. 